Okay, welcome to the Elokos channel. This is class number nine in the Mimer Vayichan Sham Yisrael. This is the third discourse in the greater book. <clears throat> this is going to be the second attempt on this class. I gave this whole entire class yesterday, and for some reason there was no sound. It didn't, there was some misconnection. <laughs> okay, so when you give over something as deep as this, and it took a lot out of me yesterday, and it was a little frustrating, but... That's the challenge. The challenge is to break through. Godliness doesn't come to the world and into our minds and hearts just like this without a little effort. Uh, yesterday, I dedicated the class. It was my grandfather's yard site, even though today it's not anymore his yard site, but I'm still going to dedicate it because the first attempt was in his honor. Uh, uh, Reb Ruvain ben of Yaakov Zev, may his neshama have a great aliyah. I also would, uh, was dedicating it to our, my anniversary, which actually is better today because today is our um, wedding anniversary too, so I want to dedicate this to my wonderful special wife uh, uh, for her to be blessed with uh, with all the blessings good health and um, patience for her husband <laughs> and and nachas from all of her children and the parnas and everything else that she needs and mainly she should be able to uh, prepare herself and all of us together as a partner with me and the partner with every other Jew and a partner with Hashem and a partner with the Rebbe as we say uh, to help bring Mashiach. Okay, and then also one more dedication today in honor of the Rafu Shalem of Achaim Shneir Zalman, Ben, Leah, Miriam. Okay, so in the class that, I, that we gave two days ago, and um, we discussed, we were beginning to measure up the state of the vessels of Atzilus, of the Kalim of Atzilus, which we say about them that they are in Aroch, we say about them that they are not comparable in any way to what is before them, to the earlier stages. It's, and therefore we also said they're yesh and they're something from nothing. Although, and this was a point, a fine point that we're dancing over here, we were trying to, to kind of like delicately carve out that um, it's not as in Aroch, it's not as insignificant and as disconnected and as something totally new like the actual creations because the creations we learned um in our class before they become something else in their consciousness they become somebody they become something so somebody else in the sense that they are not divine consciousness and therefore in the words of the Maimer, he calls it they are in in their mohus in their substance however the kalim the vessels of Atsilos, although due to the fact, this is important, remember these words, due to the fact that it is a metzios, that means it's something already. The energies are defined with specific definitions which make them something already, um, but they're, they're not a somebody. They are like Hashem transferring himself into somethingness. So they're metzios, but they're still divine. Now what we were learning is we're going to measure them up and to see when we say it is utterly inconsequential, insignificant, you cannot trace it at all in its source. It's like some, it's totally a new, new, new reality that doesn't exist at all before. To what degree do we say that? It depending, it depends to which before level we are talking. Which, when we say before, before the Kalim of Atzilus, to which level are we measuring it up? To what? So in last class, we pointed out four levels, A, B, C, and D. So let's go over them very quickly. First, number um, A was um, the orange Sof itself, before the Tzimtzum. And obviously over there, the, the measuring, the, the Kalim measured up to the orange Sof, to the infinite light, when it's in its pure infinity, has zero there isn't a trace of metzios. There isn't even a tiny, even you might say, potential of a potential for metzios, for somethingness in that infinite light at that stage. And therefore, the, the kalim of atzilas that are very much sp specified and defined are a complete enaroch. That's, of course, that's that, that, that we're going to see and that we're going to learn about. Now let's go to the next stage. Stage number B was the the power of limitation while it's still contained in the orange self since the orange self is perfect with utter perfection like we learned from the teaching of 
the Avodah Sakodesh, Ramea ben Gabai, in which he teaches that the Orin Sof has to have within himself the power to limit. So while that power of limitation is still in the Orin Sof, it's not differentiated. How do we measure up the Kalim of Atzilus to that power? So I'm going to give you a sneak peek ahead. He's going to claim in the Mimer that to that level, it is also completely in Aroch. It's uh, the, the Kalim of Atzilus. Although this is already meaning verses and in relationship to the to the um, uh, the power of a, of a limitation, the power Hagvul, while it's included in the in the in the Kayach since over there the Kayach Hagvul is not defined as a Kayach Hagvul, a power of limitation, but rather it's all one and the same of the Kayach Habligvul. It's part of the of the infinity of the infinite capabilities of the of the ain self is that can also limit so it's not a power of limitation so there is no limitation and if there's no limitation it is absolutely let's use the word cut off and severed or removed and absolutely unlike with an absolute unlikeness to the powers of the spheroids the kalim which are already defined, definable energies. Okay, now we go to step stage number three, or as we called it, C last time. That is the power of the Koyach HaGvul once it separates from the Koyach HaBligvul. How does it become separated? Meaning the power of limitation, God's power to limit, when it becomes separated from the power of, of the of the Bligvul, of the Orient Self, how does it separate? When Hashem blocks the infinite light through the tzimtzum, and what's left over after the tzimtzum is these tiny traces of letters, as we call them, the kayach harishimu, which another word for that is the kayach hagvul, the power of the orin sof to limit. Oh, over here already, we are seeing a power to limit. And we're seeing it as an individual power. Because it's no more embedded or it's no more submerged in the otherwise limitless power of God. It stands out now as something for itself. And in that case, he's going to make the argument that over here already there is a little bit of an erech. We can't say that it's completely an aroch. There's a little bit of an erech. Erech meaning there's somewhat of a tracing that we can trace to the koach hagavul to the Oisya Sarashimu, like we learned earlier in the Maimon, we said the Koyach Harashimu, that's responsible directly for the Kalim. Although they are still in the way one will influence the other is in a way of distance, not in a way of connection. It is in a way of very of distance, like we learned earlier in the Maimon. Yet we can't say bimuhus in essence that the powers of the Kalim of Atsilis are bimuhusam in essence removed from that because that power already entertains gavul limitation. Although it's not limited, it's the power of the ain self to limit, but you're hearing already a limitation. And the power of the kalim of the tzilis is an actual limited energy. This is limited, and this is the power to limit, but there is already a, a linking up, uh, it, all, albeit in a very, very, very far away. And now the last one, which is D, is a more immediate source. And what's that? Once the light of the Kav, let's 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 go back. Remember, there is a symptom. The orange self gets blocked. There is a symptom Arisha on the first symptom. Then there is a re and, and, and which leaves over the, the as we discussed, these Isis Arishimu, these letters of of the of, of Rishimu, the power of Gavul of Hashem that's left over in this dark, let's let's call it in this black hole. And then there is a reintroduction of the orange self where the Oren Sof comes in, but it comes in a measured manner, in a manner of a Kav, to whatever degree that's called measured, although it's still a Kayach Bligvul, because it's an Oren Sof, it's a ray of the Ein Sof. And since it's shining through, and it shines through the Rishimu, so it kind of, the Rishimu imp, imp, uh, 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 superimposes on the light, on the otherwise infinite light, some kind of breaks, some kind of a limiting power. Because the koach is mixing with the koach 
the limitlessness of God is mixing with the power. It's like chesed and gavura mixing together. And it's explained in many places that, that the koyach gavul, the koyach habaligvul, the kav is chesed, and the and the and the rishimu is gavura. It's a limitation. So you're feeding the energies of kindness through the restraint and the filters of gavura. Now it's becoming um, a more harnessed and more self-controlled light. Okay, and what happens? So then, the, we were learning earlier, okay, then you have uh, Atsilas comes into being, the world of Atsilas, um, which is uh, the vessels of Atsilas and then the lights of Atsilas, which come directly from the Kav. That's what we discussed. But, was mentioned, there was a stage, there, there's, there's, there, is, there are levels in between. And what are the levels in between? Primarily, Olamos Ein Sof. There are worlds that are without an end that precede Atsilas. They're called limitless worlds, but they're worlds. And they are in between the Tzimtzum Arishon and the world of Atsilas. And most notably, the level called Adam Kadmon, Primordial Man. So what's Primordial Man? Primordial Man is a, a, a we might say, a sketch, a blueprint for every single world that is going to be created. It's like Hashem imagines, and in Hashem's imagination, when he imagines something, that imagination actually produces. It's not like our imagination doesn't produce anything unless we do it. Unless we take materials and actually build what we are imagining. It doesn't really have a reality. But by God, his imagination is actually creating. So his, when Hashem imagines, but what does he imagine? He imagines all of existence in a nutshell. Meaning to say, every world, every sphere, every attribute, every eventually... Uh, including the, the spirit from, from the highest spiritual worlds to the lowest physical world, every detail and sub detail and sub 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 detail. So every 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 planet, every star, every galaxy, of course, and then all the way down to every single human being and every single animal, every single insect, and every subatomic particle. Every single creature that is in the sum totality of all of existence was brought up in that initial thought. So it's it, it, it's it, it's basically all of creation. However, it's all in one point, meaning to say that all of time and every event that ever happens, every event, including the miracles today we had in Israel with the uh, with the with the explosions of the of the pagers and the. And the and the and then and then the, the walkie talkies today and these incredible miracles we have to thank God for what's going on. But all all these unfolding events, they were all scanned already, seen, pre-seen then. But over there, the first event that happened on the first day of creation, and this event that happened today, thousands of years later, and all the events in between, and all the events of the future are all scanned in one scan, which means they're all together. That means that everything stands both in space, there is no space for it, and there is no time for it. Because everything is in one. Yet everything is there. So if everything is there already, in a sense, this is the this is where every this is where all of existence originates. This is the originating point of, of all of existence. In a sense, the entire project of creation is done once. This is the origin, the origination of existence is done in Adam Kadmo. However, because, because it's it's uh in its original state, because it's uh the first flash, and because it's it's not differentiated. Now, how is it that everything, how is it that that north and south can be in the same space? How is it that east and west? How is it that high and low? How is it the physical and spiritual? How is it that past, present, and future are all in one? That's because they exist, everything exists, but it exists in a non-existent state. I mean, it's not in existence as we would call it in existence. Because once things are in existence, once a piece of wood is in existence, the piece of wood is occupying space, and you can't put a stone into that piece where the wood is. Because the stone will have to occupy its space especially since we're saying now that everything is scanned, including the physical world, every creature, which are space-occupying space, space occupying creatures and beings, substances, and yet everything is together. How is it all together? That's because everything is in a non-existent state. So it's, you might say, the concept of everything, 
It's it, 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 it's there, but not, not pronounced. Okay, so now, okay, we're going to talk about this a little more, but before we before we continue, now let's take a look and we say, once we have already, obviously we have the spherot in existence over here, including the lights of the spheroids are, are there, but also the vessels of the latter world of Atsilus is there. So the chesed is there, gavur is there. The kindness is there and the discipline is there and all the other attributes. But in that state, the kindness and the gavura and all the other are all one. And that's why it's explained, the words that use regarding Adam Kadman, that everything is in one keli. It's one vessel. It's one vessel that contains it all. All the vessels are all one vessel. So now... The, the great question is, how do we compare the Kalem of Atsilus? Can we trace them back into Adam Kadma? And over here, you have to vote. If you're giving the, uh, for everyone listening over here, yeah, you'll have to make the vote that, yes, you can trace them. Because it, we're saying that the Chesed already is produced and the Gevur is already produced. And these are the building blocks of everything that will later be produced. But at least these building blocks, these ten spherot, they're all there. They're sharing the same space. They're sharing, but they're all there. So there is already a sign. You can't say that the Kalim of Atsilus are completely original when it was there. And obviously in a much loftier state. And that's the argument that he's basically going to make, that there is an Erech. However, however, to make the argument stronger, he says like this. In, in the writings of the Arizal, when it refers to the spheros while they're in Adam Kadmon, in the writings of the Arizal, he, he says, he doesn't call them spherot. He says, you can't say they're spheros. Definitely not the gufim of the spheros. The gufim of the spheros, gufim means the body. The body of the spheros are the are the kalem, are the vessels. We def, That's too coarse, way too coarse. There's no gufim. There's no there's no substance of bodies of the of the vessels of Atsilus in in Adam Kadma. Now you might say, okay, the soul of it, the spirit of it. No, the soul is also too coarse. The soul of an attribute is already too coarse, meaning too much of a being, too much of a substance of Chesed or Gavura for it to for us to place it in Adam Kadma. Because if the, the neshamas would be present, then that would create a slight differentiation already between between the various different parts of it, and it wouldn't be all one. So the words the Arizal uses, it's the shoresh haneshamas of the gufim. It's the root for the souls of the bodies. That means it is he's 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 abstracting it twice, not the body, soul, not the soul, but the root. Of the soul, and it is stated that in, in that form of existence, it's it's existing completely in a non-existent state. It's not bepchenas metzias. So, if we're going to argue and say that everything exists, but it's not in existence, you can't define it in existence. Then, when the spheroids come out and they emerge into existence, then we do have something totally new. We have an existence of spheros. When they were in Adam Kadman, they were not there. There was some kind, you might say, some kind of a potential, but not it. So the fact that it 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 now emerges as a metzia says something, there is something totally new, a real chidush, a real yeshmei and something that's there. But he makes the argument that it's not that case. Because he says like this: in truth, in Adam Kadmon, something came into existence already. The truth is, everything came into existence. If so, why is it that when we look at Adam Kadman, we don't see any of it because it's all one, and we, therefore we don't differentiate and we can't see the particulars? That's not because they don't exist, but that's because the light that is shining in Adam Kadman is so bright that the brightness of the light is not allowing you to differentiate and see the particles. The particles of everything that is going to exist in all of the cosmic orders all exist there. And because of that, it should really already be, and be able to be differentiated one from the other. But the reason they don't is because the light that shines. Now, what are we, which light? You see, the light of the Kav, the light of the Orient Self, 
is making its way down f- from after the first symptom down through through all the stages until Atsilas, including Atsilas. But what happens with the light of other, of the kav, light of the kav, the light of the, that thread of light, it gets dimmer as it's coming down. But in the world of Adam Kadmon, the light is turned on till it's to its fullest. It's not dimmed yet. Or if it's dimmed, it's dimmed very little. Or the word he uses over here is actually, it's shining b'chol ha-tokev. The light is shining in all of its intensity. And because it's shining so intensely, it's overpowering the, 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 the subtle, subtle, subtle kalim that are there. And as a result of that, it's as if there are no kalim. But not because inherently they're not there. And therefore, and, and what's the proof? So over here he doesn't say much, but he in the Mimer he references the Sefer Tafre Samachvav, which is an earlier um lengthy discourse. The, the Rebbe Rashab, the author that we are learning, the fifth Chabad Rebbe, wrote or said thousands of discourses. But his two most prized uh, hemshechem, which means the long stringed um, series of discourses, one was said in 1906 in Tafresh Samachvav, and the next one was said in 1912, Tafresh Ayin Um And the Tafresh Samachvav is, again, a, a the lar- second to the largest discourse in all of Hasidic history. But it's second to the largest because it's second to the one that we're studying now, I and B. So here he makes reference to a one of the discourses over there where he discusses this subject. And he says like this, you have to say that in Adam Kadmon, everything is already in existence. Everything came into being. Because if you're going to say in Adam Kadmon, nothing is existing. So what is the chidush of Adam Kadmon? Why do you need that stage? What was brought into the, into, what did that stage, Adam Kadmon, in terms of the ev- evolving worlds, how, why was that stage needed? What is it bringing to the table that was not here before? The potential to limit that we have already in the, in the Oisius HaRishimu, in the letters of the Rishimu, you have already the potential to limit, to create whatever you want. You're going to say that now it's not just the potential to create whatever you want, every limitation, but there's a, but there is an actual sketch of what is going to be created. Oh, so that means that something has now been produced. There is already a metzius. There is already something. However, the, re- the reason we say that in Adam Kadmon, Kulam Niskar and Beskira Achas, which means everything is scanned in one, in one split second. It's not even a second. There's no time there. But everything is scanned as one. And everything is one, and everything is in one keli, everything is in one vessel, which would imply that things are not yet in a state of thinginess. That's because, not because they're not there, with a microscope you would see them, meaning to say, a spiritual microscope that can, that can kind of di- block the light so you can see the hidden particles that are in the light. The reason you don't see them is because the light is blinding. It, you know, we have a little example for that. Maybe, perhaps he doesn't, I, I didn't see this. But the fact that we learned that when, when you have a flash of, 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 um, of uh, creativity, when you have a flash of wisdom, a flash of chachma, that flashes in a person's mind, we learned that immediately there are words there. There are letters that are carrying the idea, encasing the idea. However, because in chachma you don't feel the letters. Because you feel just the light. The light is so sharp and so potent that you don't see the words that are there. But when the light of the Chachma gets a little dimmer, in Bina, the light of Chachma, the light, the initial, the light of the soul, the brightness gets dimmer. So that's when you start noticing the words in your head, the words of the idea. So similar to that, it's probably the same idea, that when the light is really strong, you don't see the Kalim. Since the Kalim are really there in existence, for that reason, the the, 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 the the relationship between the Kalim of Atsilos and the Kalim of Adam Kadman are is a real relationship. It's not complete in Aroch. Let's read it inside now. Um okay. Look what it says in the Mimer Yam Tifshur Rashana. 
in the year, as we said, to 50, Reis HaMach Vav is 56, 66, 5666, as we said, 1906. Sha'a kelen da achar be'etzem, that the vessels of Atzilus are not essentially a mohus acher, another mohus, a different substance, be'etzem, I mean, the vessels of Atzilus are not, legabi p'chines ha'kelen da adam kadmon, to the vessels that there are in Adom Kadmo. The head of Amatzias Shalahem, because this that we say regarding the, the vessels in Adom Kadmo, that they are so not, that they don't have Matzias, they're not a substance, they're not a something. Shem Rak is the Gufais, that they are only, they are merely the, the root of the Nishamais, of the Kalim, of the body. Gufais means the body. Hurak is not essentially because of who they are. It's not because of the kalim. It's mitzada or shemeir sham betaykev. It's because the light of the kav is shining there at such a high, in such a bright manner, betaykev agilu, with the intense revelation. And it's because of that that the kalim are canceled, that you don't see them. However, when we say the vessels of Atsilus are considered in Aroch, they're considered inconsequential and utterly nothing to what's above them. So we would not, that's not to the vessels in Erech, in, uh, in, um, in Odom Kadmon, in Primordial Man, but rather, the real in Aroch over here is to the the orange self, we're going to go higher than the Adam Kadmon, the primordial man, than the sketch. We're going to go, we're going to reverse back in time before Hashem is imagining already the whole cosmic order in Adam Kadmon. We're going to go back to pre Tzimtzum, to the orange self. Oh, of course, the orange self is pure infinity. Over there, the Kalim of Atzilus have no, have no roots over there. That's for sure. That's state, that, that was A. Uh, level A. We jumped from D to A. But level A, of course, on that level, the Orin Soif. V'chein, and legabe ha'or ha'meir behem, and so too, the vessels of Atzilus are considered nothing in in relationship and measuring up to the light that's shining in the vessels. Which light? The Oirois, every keli has a light. That's its soul. The lights we were discussing over the oirais that go into the kalim. Well, that's much closer. These are the lights that are animating the, the, the vessels. Yeah. But these lights are are a product of the kav. Of remember, the kav is the source of the lights. The Rishimu is the source of the vessels, the, the trace. But the the, the 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 lights that are shining in the vessels are coming from the kav. And the kav is a continuation of the orange self. So since um, the 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 kalim are lim, are gvul are limitation, and the oirois that are shining in the kalim are really an, a a manifestation or revelation of the or ein sof of the infinite light. So therefore, the kalim to the very oirois that are within them are considered utterly nothing. However, regarding the other kalim, what do we mean? Regarding the kalim itself, the source of these vessels. Even on a much higher level in Adom Kadmon, which Adom Kadmon is much higher than Atzilus. But now again, we're not looking at the light that's shining in Adom Kadmon. We're looking at the vessels that are in Adom Kadmon. If you're measuring up the vessels of Atzilus to the vessels of Adom Kadmon, it's not Enaroch. It's not. It's not completely Enaroch. Shehu Aras Erein Soif, which that the light that's shining over there is a ray of the Erein Soif. So just like we would say that to the Ain Sof itself, the 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 Kalim are nothing. So too to the aura of the Orient Sof, to the radiance of the Orient Sof, they're also nothing. Okay, we'll end it over here. Let's have Mashiach today. And now we're going to see how he traces it. How about the next point he's going to bring out? How about if we're going to now measure it up to the Koach Hagvul? Not the Ein Sof as it is Ein Sof, but the power of Gavul, the power to limit that is in the Ein Sof. And he's going to differentiate between 
when that, as we said already, when that's in stage C or when that's in stage B, as we shall see in the next class.